Hey guys, it's X, and welcome to another video. Now, I haven't been around for three or four days, maybe five days or so, and it's going to be a while before things will be back to normal around here, but some things have happened that have needed my immediate attention, and I've been dealing with those. Um, secondly, <laughs> the time that I have had to myself, I've actually been spending playing StarCraft II, and I haven't gotten any good replays, and even if I did, um, I don't know how exactly I want to edit them whenever they're longer than 15 minutes, so I don't know if I want to release multiple parts and stuff. So I've been playing StarCraft II, and I've only been playing about an hour of that per night, and I've also spent some time playing this game. This game is called Atmosphere. And I got someone on Twitter saying, Hey X, if you play this game, you'll get 100,000 more subscribers guaranteed. Now, of course, that's unlikely. And I didn't start playing this game because of that promise. Uh, the subscribe I'm very happy with the subscriber count that I have and how quickly it's going up as it is. I'm not looking for any major pushes or anything like that right now. But I started playing this game just because of the name Atmosphere, actually. I was like, you know what? Let me give it a shot. This guy seems confident in what he's talking about. So I hit up this game, and it's actually very cool. Let me give you a brief explanation of it. This is my character. Um, this is David R64. He's modeled after a character that I created for Dungeons and Dragons and other role-playing uh, role playing games. Anyway, I'll explain more about him in a bit. But if you'll notice here, the game is paused, and I'm playing X's Atmosphere Adventure Level Zero Tutorial by David R64. Yes, you can play. Uh, you can create your own levels, and you can distribute them. So that's kind of what I've been doing. I've spent a lot of time making two levels. <clears throat> Excuse me. Two levels. This first one is this tutorial. And I'm going to play through this tutorial so you guys can get an idea of what this game is about. And if you'll notice, these are all levels up here that other people have made. These are all things that people have made in the designer. And you can play them. And the game is free to play. It does involve a small browser download, but once you've downloaded it, you can play online. And I have to say that it's very difficult to play this game during the day because their web server in my opinion, is not up to snuff. Their, their web server is is not able to handle the traffic that the website is getting right now. So if you're going to play this game, try and play it during off hours. Don't try to play it during peak hours. And if you do play it during peak hours, make sure you give it plenty of time to load because it will eventually load even during peak hours. So just give it some time. Um, I'm pretty sure that once they get some more players and some more money coming in, they'll upgrade to a better server. Anyway, these are all levels other people have uh, made, and you can play them all for free, so they're pretty awesome. Everybody's done a bunch of really cool things in this thing. And what I've done is I've created this tutorial level, and let me go ahead and get playing it now because I feel like I've talked enough. There we go. Once you get in, it has standard WASD controls, and I made this level for you guys so that if you are interested in the game, you can come play it. It is a tutorial, and these little stickers on the ground that you see here, you can walk up to them and stand on them and it gives you little hints on what you should be doing. So I'm gonna play through this level and I'm just gonna briefly touch on each of these stickers. This one basically welcomes you and if you move forward and step on the next one, it, gets, it lets you know how you can change your controls and then it asks you to find the next sticker somewhere on the screen, basically getting you familiar with the mouse controls. And if you've played adventure games before, then you're gonna be familiar with these controls anyway. But you can pan the mouse around and if you'll notice, let me go ahead and move off that sticker so that it goes away. Notice I've got a sword. And whenever you create your character, you start off uh, being able to choose one of several different weapons. I didn't know that the weapons choices were anything more than aesthetic. That is, they have, they actually do affect how you play the game. Like some weapons are faster, some are slower, some deal more damage, some have a knockback and things like that. Luckily, I'm happy with my choice. I really like this sword, so we're going to continue playing with that. Your starter sword is this wooden one, and I've mapped that to key zero because it's a little bit faster than my standard weapon. Well, I guess maybe not. I don't know. I haven't really played around with it too much. You also get a bomb weapon, which has no ammo, and a laser gun, which has no ammo right now. So anyway, if we find the next sticker, it tells you, it basically congratulates you and show you how to collect power-ups. I mean, not power-ups, uh, treasures. So we're collecting some of these. You'll see you find this next sticker, and it gives you a little more help panning the camera around. So let's look at the back of the building, that there's a ladder up there, so we'll head up here. And you can play this level on your own. I recommend that you do, but I do have another level that I made that's an actual full-fledged level, and I'll make another video introducing that. So, we come up to the gap here, and uh, this little bit tutorial on jumping tells you how to make a jump over the gap. This one encourages you to head over to the bridge. And this is where you can learn about power-ups. I'm not going to cover these stickers right now, but you can read them whenever you play it. Basically, this is a run power-up. And if you'll notice, there is a locked gate up there. See that gate up at the top? But I can't reach it because I can't jump high enough. So this is a run power-up, and it permanently increases your run speed. If you walk on it, you'll notice now I'm running a lot faster. And here we have a jump power-up. All right, so this gives me the ability to actually jump. And after you've collected both power-ups, the key appears here. So you grab the key. And now I can jump high enough and run fast enough to actually make it up here. I'll open the gate with the key. 
Now this one, this sticker is basically telling you that there are no walls here and that it's possible to fall off the edge. And this is one way that you can lose a life in this game. Falling off the edge. And now we're going to have our battle with our first monster. We walk into this room, and here he comes. You hold control, and you can block attacks. But blocks don't always work, so be careful. Unless you have a shield, which you can buy from their store. See, whenever I parried, he was able to knock my weapon away. And he's dealing a little bit of damage to me. If I swing at him, he has his own little parry. So to fight this guy, you have to either swing at him and take damage, or wait for him to block, like that, and then come around behind him and hit him behind, from behind. So there's a little bit of strategy in fighting those guys. Or you can just jump on their heads. Jumping on their heads also deals damage. Once he's dead, this jump power-up appears. You grab the jump power-up, and it gives you immense jumping capability for just a few seconds. So that's how you get up here. And after a while, it goes away. Here we have a checkpoint. Hitting the checkpoint will make you spawn there if you die. And there's some bombs over here on this side. So we finally got some ammunition. Open up our bomb weapon. And now we can break open this stone block. We launch the bomb and it goes kaboom. Now, you'll notice I'm moving a lot slower with my bomb weapon out. So you want to switch back to your melee weapon before you walk over these sticks, because those will collapse underneath you, as this sticker tells you. So you'll switch back to your melee weapon, and you can move at normal speed again. And you can either run over them really quickly, making sure they don't fall, because if you stay on them too long, they'll fall off. Watch. See, there it goes. Or you can just clear them with a jump. Now, similar to that high jump power-up earlier, there is a run speed power-up that lasts for only a few seconds, and it gives you immense running speed, so we're going to collect these gems using that. And there's a fence at the end that you should jump over. Yeah! Just for fun. Just a little tutorial on the power-ups. Now, we've got some enemies over here at ranged. Now, if I wanted to, I could use my three bombs to attack them, but... Or I could jump over there and just melee them. But there is also this ammunition here, and that sticker explains what this ammunition actually is. Um, there's this am ammunition. You collect that, and you can use your laser gun. Now, I have auto-aim turned off, but you can auto set it to auto-aim so that it locks onto targets. I just find the, I just find it requires a little bit more skill, and allows you to do a little more fancy things if you don't have auto-aim on. So I'm taking out these guys from a distance. Or I'm trying to, anyway. Alright, I might just have to melee that guy. I do have this one set to respawn, so if you run out of ammo, you can just collect that one again. Oh, come on. Alright, I'm gonna take him. Well, he's got some friends back there. Let me, let me get his friends. See those casters? Some casters way back there. Make sure you take them out. They take two shots each before you jump. They're both dead. And let's collect this power up again. And before you jump, make sure to switch back to your melee weapon so you get full run speed. And then make the jump. Now, earlier I said you could jump on this guy's head, and I'm going to show you how to do that. You just jump. Oh, he ran under me. See, jumping on their heads also deals damage, so it's kind of like Mario. And that's kind of the best way to handle these guys with the axes, because they like to parry a lot, and they have a good counterattack. Alright, so after you kill them, some health spawns on this platform, which you can see I actually need it, if you look in the upper left, my health bar. So we'll collect the health. And this sticker explains that there's going to be an ambush on this next platform here. So... Because this is a tutorial, I'm not purposely trying to throw very difficult things in front of you guys. But yeah, there is an ambush on this platform. Just take them out by strafing using your weapon. And here the auto-aim really, uh, really comes in handy. If you run out of ammo, you can pick up the ammo that I've supplied for you here. And these do respawn, so you're good to go. We'll just take these guys out. There we go. All done. Switching back my melee weapon for full run speed. I can jump over here. And jump down this chute. Alright, so now we're in here. There's a key up at the top, but I can't actually reach it. And this sticker asks you how you're actually going to reach that key. It's too high for me to reach. And I notice that there is a monkey block over there and a bomb nearby. So we're going to collect the bomb. Use my bomb weapon to blow this open. And it explains what you can use with well, what you can do with crates. Much like Zelda, you can push them around, but be careful because when you enter this room, these enemies will spawn. So, what I like to do here is I like to use any extra bombs I have left over, because bombs can't hurt you, but they can hurt them. And it's a good way to deal with multiple enemies at once. You can see I just cleared them out fairly easily using those extra bombs. But you don't want to always use up all your bombs on things like this. It's safe to do that here because I basically told you so. But there are some instances where you're going to want to save them. So you can push crates over here. But you'll see even pushing the crate very near 
make sure I can actually move it here. Very near that keyhole. I still can't reach it. So there is one other room. And those those plates don't look very safe. But it's okay. In the tutorial, they're safe to walk on at first. Once you get across, spikes do pop up. So be careful there. And there are some power-ups here. Now here's a jump power-up. A permanent jump power-up. So I grab this, and now I can jump higher than I was able to before. So in combination with that crate and this jump power-up, I'm able to collect that key. But getting back across these spikes is going to be a little difficult. That's why you're going to have to use this sticky power-up. If you grab this, for a limited time, it lets you walk on walls. So I'm using it to walk on walls to get over the spikes and over here. If you mess up it at all, uh, at all you'll take some damage. That's why I put this 100 health power-up to spawn as soon as you grab that power-up. So anyway, now I've got the jump power-up and the crate is here. See, because without the, without the crate, you're barely just not able to reach it. So if you use the crate and the jump power-up, you can get the key and open up this locked door. And here's the ending. Here's the end of, tu of the tutorial. But before I go, there is a secret in this stage. If you, do, if you run straight to the finish flag, you'll miss it. But if you'll come straight to this secret here, you'll see that I've put some gems in here. And as this explains... Oh, a little bit of frame rate issues there. This is the third secret area in the game, in, in this stage, and there are two others in this. And I'll leave you guys to figure that out. I'll leave you guys to find those if you want to play this tutorial stage. And then you land on the finish flag, and it's done. Now, the goal in every stage is to get as high a score as possible. As you can see, the game does mark the players and their scores. So I invite you guys to come play this, uh, come play this game, see if you can get a better score than everyone else. Um, I'll put the link in the video description, and I do have another level available. I'm going to make another video, a very short one, to introduce that level, and you guys will be able to play that too. So until next time, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.